How did the Prophet ﷺ meet Khadija? How did this come about? Now, it so happened that Khadija's older sister had a flock. She had a, uh, a herd of camels. And her older sister hired the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to take their flock out and to uh, graze them outside of Mecca. And she hired two people. We don't have the name of the other person. The Prophet ﷺ and another young man. After the Prophet ﷺ had finished the grazing, they had to go back into town in order to collect their wages. So the young man that was with the Prophet ﷺ, and at this age the Prophet ﷺ is probably 23, 24 years old. The young man that was with him said, now that we're done, come let's go and ask our wages from Khadija's sister. So the Prophet ﷺ said, why don't you go on my behalf because I am too shy to go because she's a woman. So. The person came to Khadija's sister and it so happened that Khadija was in her house at that time. And he asked for his wages. Khadija said, where is Muhammad? He also has earned half of the wage. Where is Muhammad? So the man said, he was too shy to come and ask it from you. And so at this Khadija's older sister said that, I have not seen any man who is more shy and more noble and more honorable and more chaste in his interactions because she's interacting with him because she's a woman so she knows he's lowering his gaze he's acting in a very elegant manner so she says i have never seen any man more and then she kept on praising the prophet sallam and uh, the narrator of this report says this was the first time khadija heard of his name in such a manner and just like in any human being that when a person is praised in such a manner something entered her heart because he's being praised in such a noble manner. And eventually, in later on in the year, Khadija had to send her own caravan to Syria. And Khadija owned a lot of wealth. But because she's a woman, she cannot go herself to do it. And so every single time she has to hire a businessman. So when she heard this praise about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu she decided, why don't I choose this young man? So. She sent a message to the Prophet ﷺ, why don't you take charge of my caravan? The Prophet ﷺ went to Abu Talib and said, Oh my uncle, Khadija has sent me such and such an offer, what do you think? And so Abu Talib basically said that, Oh my nephew Khadija is well known to be the richest woman and you know, this is definitely much better than the job that you're doing now. It's, you're going to get inshallah good sustenance. Allah has blessed you with this opportunity. Do not say no to her. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said yes. And Khadija sent one of her servants uh, along as well to him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi took the caravan to the city of uh, Busra. So Khadija had sent her servant, the name is given is Maysara generally. And when Maysara came back, so the Prophet went to Basra and then returned. When the Prophet came back, Maysara told Khadija of the care and concern that the Prophet had shown, of his honesty. And the Prophet made double or triple, yani the Arabic says adaf, which means many times more, the Prophet that anybody else had made before him. This is now uh, increasing the emotions that Khadija has. There's nothing wrong at all with her now having a desire to marry the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And SubhanAllah, what lady would not have desired to marry the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The details differ about how the uh, proposal came about, but they all agree about one thing. Khadija was the one who instigated it. Uh, in one version, Khadija told uh, a friend or, or it says another servant of hers who was a, an elderly lady by the name of Nafisa, it is said, uh, that she expressed, uh, she expressed an interest in marrying the Prophet ﷺ. And so Nafisa said, leave this to me, I will arrange it. And so she visited the Prophet ﷺ and she was an elderly lady and she said that, O oh Muhammad ﷺ, again he's not a prophet at this time, O oh Muhammad ﷺ, why don't you get married? So the Prophet ﷺ smiled and said, and who would marry me? Because I am the orphan, poor person of the Quraysh. I'm an orphan and I'm poor. Who's going to marry me? And so uh, Nafisa said, what if Khadija wanted to marry you? What if Khadija? So she's not saying Khadija is sending me, but it's there. What if my master, what if my friend Khadija wanted to marry you? And the Prophet was quiet and then he said, why would she want me? Notice he didn't say, I'm not interested in her. He's wondering, why would she want me? So the message is given that he is interested. 
Because she didn't say, he didn't say, no, I'm not interested in her. Rather, he's thinking, why would she want somebody like me? Because he considered himself to be uh, uh, not somebody that was uh, worthwhile, but subhanAllah, he is Rasulullah, and he was going to be Rasulullah. And so Nafisa went back and told uh, Khadija, and there the matter then went to stage two. Uh, Ibn Ishaq says, by the way, that this marriage took place in the month of Safar, in the month of Safar, three months after he returned from Basra. Three months after the journey. So for three months, there was this back and forth. Ibn Hajar and others point out that Khadija's father had died. That her uncle Amr ibn Asad became her wali. And Abu Talib came with the Prophet Sallallahu And Abu Talib performed the khutbah. He performed the sermon. And the sermon is recorded in one of the early books. That Abu Talib began by praising Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then talking about the lineage of the Quraysh. That's what they always talked about. That we are the noble descendants of Ibrahim and Ismail, that Allah has blessed us with this and this, and that of the blessings we have is that we have the, we are the care, the caretakers of the Kaaba, and Allah has blessed us to be the people of Mecca. And my nephew, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu my nephew is the one who is no comparison with any other young man in all of Mecca, in his manners and his nobility and his lineage. And he has proposed to your noble lady, Al-Karima, your noble daughter, your noble lady, Khadija, with a mahar of 12 uqiyya, uh, wanishan, yani, uqiyya is a nugget of silver. So 12 nuggets of silver with a little bit of uh, coins of silver as well. And so he gave the khutbah at this Amr, uh, Khadija's uncle stood up and said, this is a young man who cannot be refused, we accept the proposal. The blessings of Khadija are simply too numerous to mention. She was the first to believe in the Prophet ﷺ. She comforted him as soon as the revelation began. She was the one who thought, let's take him to Waraqa ibn Nawfal. Let's take him to somebody who knows what's going on and ask what is happening. Uh, she was the only one whom Jibreel would come in the household of Khadija. He would not enter any other household, any other wife's house. Any other wife's house, he would not enter later on. Aisha, Umm Salama, no one. He only entered the house of Khadija. And uh, Jibreel told the Prophet Sallallahu once when the Prophet was sitting in Mecca, the Prophet Sallallahu said to Khadija that, Oh Khadija, here is Jibreel. Because Jibreel would enter and Khadija was in the house, the only wife he would enter. Here is Jibreel and he is sending Allah's salam upon you, SubhanAllah. He is sending Allah's salam upon you and He is giving you the glad tidings of a house in Jannah where there's not going to be any noise and any struggling. You will have peace in that household. And so Khadija responded that, Inna Allah huwa salam. Allah is a salam. Wa ala Jibreel as salam. And may salam be upon Jibreel. Wa alayka ya Rasulullah as salam. And may salam be upon you, ya Rasulullah. This was Khadija's uh, response. We had already said that Khadija had been married twice before. From her first marriage, she had a son named Hala. Hala accepted Islam eventually and lived a noble life uh, with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallam and Khadija had at least six children. I already said this, that all of the children of the Prophet were through Khadija. The first child of the Prophet you should all know his name, it is Al-Qasim. It is said that Al-Qasim had reached the age where the boys could ride on the camel, six, seven, eight years old, and then he passed away. And then the Prophet had Zainab, Ruqayya, Umm Kulthum, and Fatima, the youngest daughter, four daughters. And then he had his final son with Khadija, and that is Abdullah. And uh, Abdullah died in infancy without even in Islam. He was born after the Wahi, and he died in Islam. Of course, the four daughters, all of them lived to maturity. All of them married, uh, and the only and the three of them died in his own lifetime. So he saw said, and buried his own daughters with his hands. The three daughters he buried with his own hands. Only Fatima outlived him. And then of course he has Ibrahim. Now Ibrahim, by the way, was not born of his wife. It was born of his maidservant, his Emma. None of the other wives of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, became pregnant other than Khadija.